today or for part two are members from the foundation of the art well so far just one member <laughs> from the foundation of the arts i have miss christy pulliam okay and we're expecting two other guests um but we're just going to get right into um just right into the discussion so tell us until they get here okay. can you tell us a little bit more about the foundation of the arts and what do you all have going on for the fall Okay, great. First of all, thank you so much for having us. I'm sure Stametta and Ian will show up here in just any second now. Um, the FOA, the Foundation of Arts, is a place where um, everyone is welcome, regardless of religion, race, uh, socioeconomic ability, um, creed, political affiliation. We're all just there to work on the arts and to enhance, to enhance the um, quality of the citizens of our community through the arts. So that's really uh, what we're what we're going for with every project. And of course, um, we just got finished um, producing Aquila and the Bee. And I think, yeah, now Ian and Sameta are here and I bet they can tell us more about that project. Um, I'm thankful that they've joined the FOA and the activities there and um, hope to have a long and happy future with them as well as everybody Definitely. at the FOA. Absolutely. Okay, so good morning to you all, Mr. Ian and Ms. Samantha. Good morning. That was my fault. I, I can't seem to get the time right when I'm coming over here. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Not a problem. Uh, welcome to, today is my Monday, so welcome to my Monday. Uh. <laughs> all right, so Miss Christy was telling us about the foundation and, you know, some of the programs you offer and how everyone is welcome, you know, regardless of, you know, who you are. What about your, like, your skill level up? <laughs> like, hey, listen, like <laughs> we have people who have worked professionally and we have people who have never, never ever. done anything. <laughs> they've never, they've never danced a step. They've never sung a tune. Uh, certainly maybe, maybe in the shower, but <laughs> yeah. they never, never even considered getting on stage last and year. We, in fact, that's probably m more than the other. Okay. Um, <laughs> And, uh, but the, the point is, I believe that we are all created in the image of an artist. We are intrinsically artists. Okay. And because of that, we have artistry in us. Right. And we can um, become craftsmen with, mm -hmm. with our bodies and our voices and our faces and, and our ability to write and choreograph. <laughs> And that's right. And uh, we are all artists somehow, and we're all practicing creativity somewhere in our lives. And if we're not, we're we're broken. Yeah. Okay. And the cool thing about the forum and my um, experience with the Foundation of Arts is, um, on the Aquila show, we had a young man who had never participated in any form of the arts wow. and by the end of the show he was acting phenomenally he was projecting he had confidence in his performance wow. Absolutely. and um so i mean we're all we're all there to help each other we really are a family and um in families sometimes you have one that's a more outgoing than the other but it's all about melding that together and bringing out the best and in finding each other. finding what you have in common um one of my my initial goals when we started this show with Aquila was um, a to bring new new kids in, especially okay. kids, and to be um, unite different groups who had not worked together before. And that's really what Aquila was about. Okay. Aquila was um, stepping out of her element into this world that she was unfamiliar with and uncomfortable with, and the the kids that she met welcomed her most of them <laughs> with 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 open arms and showed her um a a life that you know what was possible for her and we have being theater people we love our craft and we can be clickish on our own okay. and we had a number i i was so excited to have a number of my students to come out for the show um, but I had a number of new kids and I was so worried because we've all heard why are all the black kids sitting together in the cafeteria and I'm like okay we got to do something to get them all together so our very first night that is what I did we did activities mm -hmm. that would mm -hmm. would force them to you know open up and and get to know others and these kids 
you would have thought that they had been friends since kindergarten. I mean, there were no divisions. And that is that is part of what we do try to do with every project is explore the possibility and the probability that we all have so much more in common than we are different. Just as human beings. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So so what I'm hearing is that um, being a part of some type of arts, especially performing arts, um, whether it's, you know, theater, like musical or just, you know, you're speaking your part, you're dancing, whatever the case, it helps open kids up to a whole new world of possibilities. It helps them find themselves a little deep. I guess mm-hmm. you say deeper. You just you you're saying it absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. perfectly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, and you know what? What Ian Ian um, uh, spoke just a little bit uh, earlier about this this kid mm-hmm. who came on who had never done anything before on the stage. You know, we we see that all the all time. The time. Mm-hmm. You know how schools. I, I did it. It's just a normal thing. I think when teachers and counselors and and even peers at school you you go to school for a while and all of a sudden everybody has their thing Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. we we all label each other you know oh that's the soccer kid oh those are the bikers oh those are the hoods or the theater geeks geeks. (laughs) you know but the the unique thing about the foa is that whatever label you've acquired at school Mm -hmm. we don't even know you at the foa (laughs) you know so you come up here up there and all of a sudden you discover that you are much more than whatever your label was at school and to speak to her point the the individual that we're talking about at school is the title is the jock but coming out here he experienced a different part of his life and now he's hooked he can't wait to join and an audition for something else and for me that's that's one of the biggest reasons why i am doing this i'm helping with this push um because i remember back in high school um i had confidence issues and self-esteem issues and i know anybody who knows me now does not believe that. <laughs> right <laughs> like, but not the ian I see. yes yes I, I was not this ian in high school until i got involved in the theater and i did shows like annie and wizard of oz and little shop of horrors and I got that validation that I was looking for, and who's to say that someone else out there is not looking for that same level of validation or to find themselves? Wow. And I believe that um, even in, as an adult, this show, uh, Akila, man, it I, I tell everybody, and I, 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 t- I even testified about it Sunday night at church. <laughs> it's much. It was much more than walking in, auditioning, getting a role, learning my lines, and putting on five productions. It was it was so much more, and it has created such a drive in me to make sure that everyone, not just people of color, not just white people, anybody who wants to, from whatever age you want to. Um, we had our youngest cast member, I think was like About seven, seven, oh. and then we had from seven all the way up until mid, mid, mid 60s, mid maybe? 60s in this show. And so it's not just for one group of people or even one age of people. It's universal. Well, you I, can I'm do so it. glad you said that. I don't mean to interrupt you too, <laughs> no. but it's it's so cool too because again, that's another way that it's unique from mm-hmm. schools. You know, in schools, everybody everybody goes with their same age group, mm-hmm. and and while that's valid on some level. Um, there's so much we can learn, right? There's so right. much I can learn Absolutely. from a 10 year old, even, Absolutely. even still working Absolutely. with them. And you know, and vice versa, of course. Um, getting to, to what Ian was saying about how theater helped him come out, I teach at the FOA. Okay. And frequently at the end of a semester, especially spring when we have our showcase or we've, we've done our shows, I think the greatest compliment um, to what I do is after I've taught a kid and they come to class and they've been super shy, they come and they audition for a show. Mm-hmm. And it's so exci- I get so excited when, even if it's not a show I'm directing, to be able to do a show with a child that I have taught. And their parents come to me and they say, you know, before um, he or she took your class, they were, they were so shy and you just really kind of opened them up and, and, and got them to step out of their their comfort zone and I feel like um I've said this to you personally Kabila it's it's this is very important to me because theater has always been my wheelhouse since I was a kid I was definitely the 
performance one. I'm not always so outgoing <laughs> in personal life. But um, when I get on stage, I'm a totally different person. I love to be someone else. And our 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 kids and our community have been so um, programmed that the only way out is through sports or through through um, rap music. And I have nothing against that. I you know I enjoy sports and and I, I definitely enjoy you know all genres of music. But I think it limits our kids Absolutely. in what they believe they can do, what they have a talent for. I've seen so many young people. I taught public school for almost 20 years. And I saw so many young people who are so talented. And I was like, you should try. No, I want to do that. It's not for black people. And I'm like, yes, it is. You know, anything that you want to do is within the realm of possibility for you, even if it's not theater. Let's say good morning right quick to a few people. Um, Ms. Donna Kirk, she says hello. Uh, Mr. Paul Gilbert, um, Rainy Myers, Kate Holiday, Nicole Stanbeck, Am- Abner, and Shaquetta Cunningham. Thank you all for tuning in and watching. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> I just want to say um, what I am doing with this push um, to get um, more people um, involved in the arts is exactly what I do. At, um, at my church and you know we've been here with Y Crew before me and Christy and um, we always tell our youth and children that you are you can do anything that you want to do you can be anyone that you want to be and for me I never if I can be honest I never understood why um, African Americans did not want to be in, or didn't feel like that they could be involved in theater because we have such great um, like like Denzel Washington and Cicely Tyson and we have such great role models in that in that arena but I think to what Sameta was saying we condition that the only way out of out up or out is through a hoop or playing a um, um, playing some type of sport but really in all truth and honesty um, being involved in the theater even helps out with that Mm -hmm. it helps you you know it helps you be more confident so that you can go out and be an excellent sportsman Mm -hmm. it helps you um know yourself so you can go out and become a doctor or a lawyer um or if you want to pursue acting full time um one of the young men that was in the production um cameron hampton he really loves acting and then during this show, he got to do some of the behind the scenes mm-hmm. rigging and stagehand. And he came up to me. He was like, man, um, this is incredible. <laughs> he said, I am just blown away. I'm having an excellent time. And if he would have never came out to audition, he would have never gotten that experience. So I told when the conversation that I had with Christy and Sameta uh, last week, I said, I think that if we can just get people here Mm -hmm. that they will stay Stay. absolutely if we can just get them in the door they'll get an experience because i i'm i'm forever linked as long as i'm in jonesboro (laughs) i'm here and i'm pushing other people to come and i'm talking to other people like hey come out and audition because this year's season is i call it the season of dreams Mm -hmm. we have some fantastic stuff that we're jungle book Clue, Beauty and the Beast, A Christmas Story, Hunchback of Notre Dame. I, it's it's an incredible season that anybody can, and these are huge casts. So we, we need people. Sometimes we run into the uh, to the audition process and we don't necessarily possibly maybe have enough people to audition for particular roles. Come out, be a part. Absolutely. And theater teaches so many skills. I mean, Honestly, you've got to learn how to manage your time. Oh, you've got to, life. you know, if you want your child to improve their reading skills, their memory skills, their math skills, you know, even even their physical endurance, theater is the place to be. Um, our kids in Aquila had to learn some very difficult words. They learned Latin. They lived. They learned French. They learned I mean, Arabic, and or just in order to spell, a, yes, ma'am, yes. just in order to spell yes. a single word. It wasn't, this was a little bit more of a challenge than just a typical play where you just come in and you learn your lines and you know most of the words. You, they had to, and, and rapid fire these spellings off and learn how to pronounce them. And they're 12, 13, 14 years old. You know, Ian and Smith have both hit on a, a key point about the FOA, and it is that 
what we do is a it might be seen as a little bit different than a lot of um, artists or arts organizations in that we start with people and we end with people and we use the arts to help them learn to grow mm -hmm. okay. um, mm -hmm. and instead of first off always going for excellent art we get that a lot okay. but that's not necessarily our first intention our first intention is to create relationships and increase skill levels and increase confidence levels in people so that we just all become a little bit better all the way around by working with each other and learning from each other. Okay, Ms. Christy, I want to ask, how long have you been working for a foundation, for the foundation? Um, I've been working for the FOA about 12 years. Okay, in your time, have you had students that came in the beginning that come back now and share their experience life experience after have, having gone through the Foundation of Arts? Yes, we have lots and lots. Um, you know, one one person I just wanted to mention because I'm trying to get in touch with him right now. I, I bet I get to talk to him this week. Um, is our own Chooks Oda? He's he's an FOA guy. I don't oh, know okay. if you know Chooks, yeah. but he played he played <laughs> a, ASU football for a while, and yes. um, he was actually he danced ballet and danced in the Nutcracker for us and did other things with us as well. But. Um, we love our chooks and that's one of and, and he is one who will say that listen once I got involved with the FOA a lot of things changed for me I started to learn a lot of different skills and how to communicate and how to articulate myself even better just from engaging in the arts with other people not to mention of course he became a dancer <laughs> <laughs> that's one thing i want to bring up and ian pointed to this also um with students who as you said they go through school they get labeled you know they're in particular cliques however a lot of people don't necessarily want to be in those cliques they want to find their individuality but because of peer pressure whatever they they just don't so by going through the foundation of the arts and similar programs um, you mentioned how it helps them kind of break out of that shell mm -hmm. and redefine who they are. Mm -hmm. And it also opens their mind up to the possibility of other careers, Absolutely. Um, yeah. other job markets mm -hmm. they might be interested in. So um, just explain, express again <laughs> to the parents that may be out there listening and individuals that interact with children on a regular basis why it's important to engage them in many types of activities not just the typical ones that you know are easier to get into well i'll jump in with the example that i use all the time um you can't say fully and have a a, a accurate statement of who you are and who you are not if you've not fully um, embraced or challenged yourself in certain areas. Okay. Um, you, 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 I don't believe that there are limits in life other than the limits that you place on yourself. Okay. I believe that if you want to achieve something, then you set obtainable goals to do so, okay. and then you do it. Um, and you might, once you achieve it, you might be like, mm, maybe this is not for me. But if you never try it, you never know. Exactly. If you never put yourself out there and take the risk, you won't know whether this is for you or not. Um, and again, I just go back to the statement um, because it was true for me. Not everybody is going to be uh, in the NFL or the NBA. Not everybody is going to be a doctor. Not everybody is going to be a lawyer. Not everybody is going to be a teacher. Um, not everybody is going to be an actor. So you have to fully invest yourself in what your passion is. And whatever your passion is, that's what usually is, is what's going to drive you. Absolutely. And that's just what I tell my, my, my youth um, at, 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 whenever I speak to someone. Absolutely. And, you know, we're in a, a unique place here in Jonesboro with the FOA. Um, I've only lived here a few years. I, I came here from Alabama. And I have family members who've been in the arts and, and have taken dance in other places like Birmingham. And I was visiting a family member recently, and they had their brochure for the, the Birmingham uh, Arts Association when they're ballet schools. And when I saw the tuition prices... <laughs> I thought, oh my gosh, our kids here are so lucky, you know, um, because 
no, it's not cheap, especially if you're taking something like dance okay. and you're really serious about training for your future. However, we have work study. We have scholarships. Okay. If, you, if you really want to be involved, oh, you can be involved. Okay. We're going to put a pause right there. And when we come back, we'll wrap up our discussion. You're tuned in to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. We're speaking with members from the Foundation of the Arts. The Arts Foundation of the Arts. Foundation of Arts. Foundation of Arts. I'm so sorry. Okay. I got your wrong with the thing. All right, so we'll be back after the main <laughs> You're listening to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. We'll be right back. We're back with Money Matters. I'm Alfred Edmund Jr. If you're trying to not only gain freedom from debt, but keep it, here's what it'll take. First, you need a strategy to manage your credit cards. Rule number one, only use one card. Pay all of the other ones off and lock them away. But keep the accounts open, because closing them could hurt your credit scores. Rule number two, always pay more than the minimum payment on your outstanding balances. Next, stop creating new debt. Reserve your credit card use for purposes of convenience, such as renting a car or buying airline tickets. Stop using it for small ticket items, things you can easily pay cash for. You should always know three things about your debt. How much you have, how much is costing you in interest and fees, and how you're going to pay it off. Without a plan, it will always cost more than you think and take even longer to get rid of. I'm Alfred Edmund Jr. for Money Matters, a product of American Urban Radio Networks. Money Matters is made possible by the Jonesboro Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, a nonprofit organization dedicated to uncompromising commitment to communities. Service, leadership, empowerment. www.jonesboroalumni.dst.org. Money Matters is brought to you by the Gears Foundation, a nonprofit organization providing students with assistance in their academic and career pursuits. Gears Foundation on Facebook, Gears underscore Inc. on Instagram, and the Gears Foundation at gmail.com. Money Matters is brought to you by Bancorp South, offering checking, savings, loans, credit cards, and wealth management. Five locations in Jonesboro to serve you. www.bancorpsouth.com or 870-972-9800. KLEK thanks CJ Pepper and the staff of Life Strategies Counseling Incorporated for helping people through hard times in life such as depression, family issues, stress, abuse, and more. They offer counseling and therapy for all ages, individuals, families, and groups. They are located at 1217 Stone Street. Phone number 1-866-972-1268 or online at lscihelp.com. The Mu Omicron Lambda Chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated was established on January 1, 1977, originally serving Blytheville, Arkansas, and now serving Jonesboro, Blytheville, Osceola, Marion, and West Memphis, Arkansas. Today, the chapter continues to make an impact by focusing on Alpha's national community outreach initiatives such as My Brother's Keeper, A Voteless People is a Hopeless People, Go to High School, Go to College, Project Alpha, Boy Scouts, and the March of Dimes. The Mu Omicron Lambda Chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated is committed to Alpha mission of developing leaders, promoting brotherhood and academic excellence, while providing service and advocacy to the community. More information about the Mu Omicron Lambda chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated is available at MOL Alphas on Facebook or via email at molalphas at gmail.com. The McDaniel Law Firm, 400 South Main Street in Jonesboro, is a firm believer in justice and equality for the minority community. The McDaniel Law Firm has fought for our rights for over 44 years. The McDaniel Law Firm offers legal help for wrongful death, as well as trucking and automobile accidents. Bobby and Brett McDaniel are available for a free consultation at 870-336-4747 or at www.mcdaniellawyers.com. Check out the Dorinda Clark Cole Radio Show every Sunday at 4 o'clock p.m. Listen as Dorinda plays the very best in contemporary gospel music and interviews all of your favorite gospel artists. The Dorinda Clark Cole Radio Show every Sunday at 4 p.m. on KLEK 102.5 FM.
House of Details, located at 3217 Herb Street, Suite C, is a proud supporter of KLEK, offering detailing on any type of vehicle, waxing, clear coat protection, basic wash, hand wash, shampoo, interior cleaning, buffering, headlight restoration, pickup, delivery, and more. With a motto of, anything mean, we can clean. Details available via Quentin Bogard at 870-273-5187. House of Details on Facebook and House of Details Jonesboro.com. Do you like the music you hear on KLEK 102.5 FM? Do you like the educational programming that we provide? Do you like the service we provide to the community? Do you like having a station to finally call your own that represents you? If so, please stop by or call any of our underwriters or sponsors that you hear on KLEK and tell them thank you for their support. The support of our underwriters and sponsors is vital for us to stay on the air. So be sure to let them know that you thank them for their support. And now back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. All right. Welcome back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. We're speaking with Miss Christy or Mrs. 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 Yeah. Christy Pulliam. 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 Uh-huh. Okay. Miss. Mrs. Mrs. Miss. 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 <laughs> Sumetto. Uh, Oh my God, Parker, Parker, mm-hmm. and Mr. Ian Buchanan. I am yes. so sorry. Today is my Monday. Please forgive me. Oh, yes. And they are here from Foundation of Arts, not the Arts. Foundation of Arts, and we've had a really lively conversation about what role uh, being involved in theater and just arts in general can have. What role it plays in your life and what effect it can have on your life, how it benefits you overall. I'm gonna stop. <laughs> They're going to. I'm gonna let Mr. Ian and the rest of them um, give you some dates and times, location, website, and any other information they can um, fit in to encourage everyone to come out, audition, sign up for classes, um, and just take a part in the theater. Be a part of the theater of the arts. I'm sorry, I keep saying theater, the arts. <laughs> All right, so go. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, um, first and foremost, I say always look at our website, which is foajonesboro.org. Okay. There you can find information about our classes, our upcoming productions, audition dates, um, any and everything that you might want to know about getting involved, you can find there. We also have a Facebook page. You can find us on Facebook at Foundation of the Arts. Or just stop by um, the forum or the art center. Uh, the forum is 115 uh, East Monroe, and the uh, art center is, I don't know that number. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, 328. 328 South Main. South Main Street, and you, you know it by the bright blue awning uh, just as you pass Monroe. Okay. All right. So. Um, and we do have um, a lot of interesting shows coming up. Hunchback is coming up, um, and then we also have... Uh, uh, FOA tradition, the Nutcracker Ballet, in Aww. the beginning of November, correct? Yeah. November, the beginning mm-hmm. of November. Actually, it's the mm-hmm. weekend before, before Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Weekend before Thanksgiving, okay. And then our next auditions will be October 20th and 21st. On the 20th is at 10 a.m., and on the 21st is at 2 p.m., and that's for uh, the production, a Chris, I almost want to say a Christmas Carol, that's not what it is. It's a Christmas story, which is uh, a you classic story. You shoot your eye out. Yeah, okay. So the Christmas story is about the little boy who's the Yes, the Red Rider writes the Red Rider. Shoot your eye out. (laughs) Um, And here's here's the thing about auditions. Um, You can find on if you go on to our website, uh, it has a um, a tab that says what you need to know before you audition, and it just gives you a list of things that you can expect at auditions and uh, what you need to be prepared for during auditions, and then just come out and have fun. Absolutely, don't don't get stressed about it. This is not Broadway. Okay. um, we we want to see everybody has something to offer. Everyone. If it hasn't been said enough, everything everyone has something to offer. And what I would definitely encourage you to do, because you know some shows do have limited roles mm-hmm. um, for for parts. But even if you don't get a part, there's other ways that you can get involved. Um, last year, I broke my ankle just before our, our big spring show musical, and I was so hurt because I couldn't audition. But I said, you know what? I want to learn about lights and sound. And so I volunteered to do lights for um, that show. So 
I love doing the tech. It is. There's always an and there's always another show to audition for mm-hmm. if, if you don't happen to make that particular cast. So you just go up there and have fun. There's no prep. No, you don't have to read anything. You don't have to learn a song. Nothing like that for almost every audition we do. Mm-hmm. Um, we, you just want to come meet you and have you read a little bit from a script for us. Okay. We'll teach you a song if it's a musical. Um, and then and then hopefully you'll make that cast. We want you to. Uh, if not, then come back again because there's, there's going to be a show that is going to be a fit for you. Okay. And if we see you, you know, We'll remember you, Absolutely. Um, and and we may come and seek you out for the next production. I always do. <laughs> okay. And the most important thing about auditioning, about being a part of the FOA family, is we want you. Okay. We want your personality, um, what you have to bring to the table to enrich the show, enrich the production, enrich the 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 entire organization. We're not looking to change you into something else we want you to be the best you that you can be and that helps us be who we are okay for sure and so what about um i don't know if we can get to prices on on the air but um tuition where can people find information about tuition if they want to sign up for other classes yes you can go on to of course foajonesboro.org um click on education the education tab and it will have a, a you can click on the brochure okay um there'll be a fall brochure and a spring brochure where we're a little behind as far as the fall brochure goes so registration's already over and classes mm-hmm. are going but you will have the spring brochure out certainly within the next couple of weeks and you can look at prices then the thing about this though is that at the foa if you are if you want to come to class and work on your art show up and do the do the work and have the fun then we're going to make sure it happens somehow. Okay. So sometimes you have to fill out a tuition waiver application. That's out also on the website. Okay. And uh, once you fill that in, get that turned in by the deadline. Um, we have a committee that that awards tuition waiver. Okay. Most of the time it's in work study, but otherwise it's, we'll just make sure you get there. All right. We want to thank everyone for opportunity. coming. Thank you. And thank everyone thank for you. listening. Go to FOA. Jones thank you for listening to Community <laughs> Conversations on KLEK 102.5. FM, a program focusing on the people working to make the Jonesboro community a better place while offering viewpoints from all sides of the issues. The views expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of KLEK 102.5 FM, the voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council, or our underwriters or sponsors.